Welcome back to Everyday Dad. Today we're going to be working on our DIY peat moss spreader again. A lot of you guys have been asking about what I've decided to do for our door. As you can see, I still haven't uh, created one. We've just been you know, closing this up with tie wire for now, which did work, but it's a little bit of a pain in the butt and uh, we want something that's going to you know, look and function a little bit better for this. So I think I came up with an idea. Uh, my goal is to keep this as DIY friendly as possible um, in terms of cost. Like I don't want, you know, I could go with hinges, but I've decided to kind of come up with more of a, a set in place and put a pin through um, type of system. I think it should be pretty simple and you should be able to can use any of the materials that you already had when creating your DIY peat moss spreader. So if you've liked and subscribed, um, definitely appreciate it. It's uh, awesome for my growing channel. I've only been at it for two, three weeks now. So I think we got 50 of us right now. And uh, thank you guys. Watch for future videos where you'll get to watch me run like a goon with this smudge pot. Get some diesel in it and then uh, light it off. And we'll be using this as a patio heater. We'll be reconditioning this fence and raising this concrete that has sunk. I also got an old reel mower for my father-in-law. So we'll be pulling this apart and uh, reconditioning it throughout my videos. I'll be giving a glimpse into each step that I take. Uh, I'll try to keep you guys updated and hopefully we'll be using it soon. All right, now you've seen the, what we got up, up and coming. Let's go ahead and get started on this uh, peat moss spreader door. Um, so first and foremost, I want to go ahead and make sure that I make this door at least as wide as one of these three cubit foot bags. I think this is going to be the most common way that I'm going to purchase this product and I want it to be wide enough that when I cut the bottom off of this bag that the, you know, that I'll be able to put it straight into the peat moss spreader easily um, without it going over the sides and all over the place. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of uh, another piece of my MDF I have here. As far as materials, you guys have been asking what materials I use. Um, this is really just stuff I had laying around the house. So this happens to be, I think, um, 5 8 MDF. And then, uh, you know, I had some a couple ripped down uh, 2x6s. It's about a 2x3, but a 2x4 would work fine. And uh, as far as materials, you could use MDF. The only problem that I foresee with this is that, you know, with water and moisture, that, you know, MDF will absorb it and, you know, kind of fall apart. So if you have plywood laying around or, you know, possibly FRP, like fiber, fiber glass reinforced plastic, those would work good as well. But uh, pretty much use whatever materials you want. The most important thing is gonna be that it has enough width on the edge here in order to staple your uh, cage wire to. So yeah, just, uh, you know, kind of run with what you have. It doesn't have to be anything specific. The only thing I do recommend is the inch and a half PVC. Um, I thought maybe this would be a little bit overkill as far as size, but it turned to, it worked out perfectly and it, it feels nice and sturdy, especially when you're carrying it around. You don't really have to worry about it falling apart when you're carrying it by the PVC uh, you know, legs on it. So that's definitely one that I would recommend. The project ended up needing four one and a half inch PVC couplings. And then one 10 foot stick of an inch and a half. I bought two 10 foot sticks on the previous video. Um, one of them sitting on the other side of my garage unused. So maybe I'll use it on some future project. But for now, we don't need it. All right, so the goal here is uh, first we're going to go ahead and just make another circle. Um, it doesn't have to be a complete circle. You just need either of the two sides and you need them to be more than the 12 inches wide of the peat moss bag. Well, as far as making my circle, um, I try to do this in the most simple way possible. Um, there are, you know, you could have tools for this, but anyways, just get a scrap piece of cardboard. So you're going to go ahead and screw it off, measure and find the center of your board, whatever piece of material you're working with. And then just put a screw through there to hold it thinner. Now it can spin around freely and you can make a nice perfect uh, line for your circle. Now, uh, this, this piece here, when you cut it, the diameter needs to be the same as your peat moss spreader. So we went with a 20 inch diameter and we need to go ahead and go with a 20 inch diameter again. So we're gonna go ahead and measure from our center point, which will be that screw. And we're gonna go all the way up to 10 inches. 
So we'll be right about there. And I'm just gonna cut a small hole for my pencil tip. Now that I have the hole for my construction pencil, just put it in there. And we're gonna go ahead and make our 20 inch circle. Now, I know this material is not quite wide enough for this, so, but I do just need that radius. Perfect. Pull that back out of there. Always remember that that screw hole is going to be your center point. You can take it out or leave it in, however you like. I'll put it back in, just so we can remember that. All right, so we got our reference line running down the center of the material. Um, it doesn't have to be parallel or anything. It just needs to go down the center of the circle. Um, for me, I did want it to line up with the edges of the board just because this board wasn't quite big enough to put my full circle on it but it does have enough material to do what I need it to do. So um, now we're gonna wanna go ahead and get our reference for the width of that peat moss bag. I measured it earlier, it is about 12 inches. I think I'm gonna go a little extra and do 12 and a half inches just to have a little bit of leeway. Um, we're gonna find the middle of that and land it right on that line. So that's gonna be six and a quarter for my 12 and a half inches. I want the tip of my tape measure to land on the outer circumference there of the circle. And same thing on the other side, I got my 12 and a half here. So we're gonna go ahead and make those marks. 12 and a half, there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, cut out the circle and then we'll keep on working with the material afterwards. If you're cutting on a table like I am, don't forget to give yourself some type of riser. <laughs> I just sunk that screw in a little further so I can turn the material as I cut. to make your spreader. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and uh, measure the inside diameter of our peat moss spreader. Working on things and making a video at the same time um, <laughs> makes things way, way more difficult. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to get measured inside um, from side to side here. So that is going to be on mine. It's going to be 28 and 5 eighths. Depending on how you build yours, it might be a little bit different. But we want that. Um, that measurement. Then we want the measurement of our material um, doubled up. So for us, this is going to be one inch and a quarter. Now, the one and an inch and a quarter length, you want to subtract from our 28 and 5 eighths. Uh, it's on the bigger side of 28 and 5 eighths. But, uh, so subtract an inch and a quarter from that, and that is how long we're going to want to cut our legs um, go be in, in between our door material. So yeah, 28 and 5 eighths minus 1 inch and a quarter, which should be 27 and 3 eighths. All 
All right, so that should be our inside supports there um, for our door. Just set it aside. I'm gonna see if I can do this whole project without spilling my coffee. I'm sure at some point I'm gonna knock it off the table. All right, so at the end of that one, you saw me cut off these couple pieces of scrap. I just did that because this is the width of our frame, um, the, the frame uh, material that we cut off for our door. And I wanna you know, be able to get this width and mark it onto my circles, that we, our circle that we made earlier. So I just made a real simple jig just for getting a good line with my pencil. So we're gonna have to line up the smaller piece on the, a little bit bigger material for our reference material make sure we do this the right way and we're trying to capture this width here so we're going to go ahead and screw this on here not doing so good with this that doesn't matter All right, so we're gonna go to scrap, screw another piece of small rep, um, scrap material just to get this width. This is really just a, a jig for making a mark with our pencil. Just a simple way to do it. All right, we're just gonna hold our pencil to the block like that. And then we have our runner on the bottom. We're just gonna follow that curvature. And then I screwed my material in again for me and it just makes it nice and easy. So. All right, that gives us a nice uh, offset line. Uh, if we want this to be real accurate, which this part, it really doesn't matter too much, but we can go ahead and measure from our center, from our reference line that we put on there earlier. We're gonna measure from our reference line out, out six and a quarter. That'll put these, uh, these two dots square with one another, which if you've done any type of framing or anything, having things square is just something that you feel is necessary, even though it's not in all projects. So we're going to mark just a quarter there. Now I can go ahead and tie those lines together. So I'm probably gonna round off these corners, so I'm just gonna draw myself in some little kind of guidance to remind me when I'm cutting. Now, this part is gonna require to have a, either a jigsaw or maybe a scroll saw, which is a hand saw, um, in order to make these cuts. So let's go ahead and uh, see how we do here. Also, be very careful making this cut. Um, you're gonna wanna do it all in one pass without having to reset or make any extra necessary lines because we are gonna use this material once again. I get too far ahead of myself I'm gonna give these reference numbers because this piece and this part right here are gonna be a mate two two and two and we'll do the same thing for the other side we'll go one and one all right so I'm gonna go ahead and use my uh, fancy little scribe here again just as a way to reference. It's not really gonna work in the corner so well here, but we can go to do that. All right, so this part isn't gonna be that crucial, so I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch this in and free your hand a little bit how I want it to be. 
All right, so I uh, cut this one out and uh, the video cut out. So anyways, what I'm doing here is uh, we're just making a catch. So this is actually gonna catch our door assembly. Um, I'm gonna take my first one, just stick it back on this cutout and kind of trace these corners that I drew in. I just freehanded these, nothing special. So um, this piece doesn't have to be super accurate other than this inside cut, you don't want to mess with it. Um, like I said, when you make your cut for your, your initial little shoes here, you want to make sure that you do it all in one pass and you don't um, got any kind of jagged back and forth or anything like that going on. Because you want this, the mate, that's going to fit right back into each other. So that's what we're going to use later for a part of our, a part of our um, gate. And this is going to screw into the peat moss spreader. And like I said, it's just going to be a catch. So we drop it in there. And then the idea will be we'll be putting a pin through to hold the door in place. All right, and we did mark these. So we got one and one. And then we got, we got two and two. We got one and one. Those should uh, fit together perfectly. All right, so now we got our two uh, frame pieces and we got our half moons here. So uh, or that's what I'm gonna call them. Uh, this is just gonna be part of the frame that follow the curvature and it gives us a good place to staple our cage wire. So we're gonna go ahead and put the leg on. You wanna make sure that the leg stays flush um, with the surface of uh of this little you know half moon that we made and we're going to want it to be as close as uh, possible as the same on both sides we're going to go and drill two pilot holes here and get this one screwed in There's our door. There's our door, and then, uh, we're gonna see if this uh, fits our catches. So here's the catch one. Put that on there. And then on the other side, catch two. There we go. Everything fits together well. I love it when a plan comes together. So here it is. We got the our door or our door frame. And that's gonna go ahead and slip down in there. Curvature is gonna be about the same on the cross the top as this once it's inside the peat moss spreader. First thing we gotta do though is we gotta go ahead and cut this cage wire all the way across on both sides. Now because uh, from the previous uh, you know how we built it we have our paddles down in there are our main supports I'm gonna line up my door so it falls square on top of those supports um, just that way there's nothing to block up or you get in the way when you're trying to add the peat moss All right, so now that we have this all cut, go ahead and remove that, and we'll see how our door fits. So. All right, looks like we can measure. Cool. So right here, I'm gonna go ahead and clamp this in place.
So my goal is to get it all clamped up nice and flush. Um, if you have two people you, or someone give you a hand, you could probably do this without clamps. But just need to get everything all lined up and in place. Another way you can do this if you don't have clamps is just to get your material where you like it and then put a couple screws just to hold it in place. So you get the one to match with your one. Um, I did mess this up a little bit. I didn't think about these uh, original supports and the amount of clearance they'd have between my door frame. So I did have to go back and uh, kind of notch out and make some room. Uh, this piece isn't really structural. It's just a catch. So it doesn't really matter what you do to it. I was kind of impatient so it looks a bit ugly but uh, it'll still serve its purpose. There we go. Lines right up. We'll stick it in there. And then we'll go ahead and uh, just screw that in. Alright, so we got our two. It's going to go back to our two, which is that under the pipe. Wow, Claire. Come here. Come here real quick. Wow, look at you, mermaid. Claire Bear, the mermaid, came to join us for a second here. <laughs> what are you doing, silly? <laughs> you jumping up and down? Decided to trim a little extra cage wire here just to make fitment a bit easier and allow that door to come in and out smoother. I did this on all four corners. You may or may not have to do this depending on how your cage wire lines up with your door. I got a little warm wound from the cage wire, no big deal. We got the catches installed in there. Just a little bit of lining up. Drops are in place. All right, after doing mine, uh, what I do recommend here is that uh, your inside difference, if you have these catches, they kind of take up any slot for you as well. I'd probably recommend cutting this an eighth inch to a quarter inch uh, shorter than the total width. That'll give you a, actually I go a quarter inch. That'll give you an eighth inch gap on either side and give you a little bit more play for getting the door in and out. Because mine, you know, you kind of kind of take a couple seconds to get it lined up perfect. If it had that extra little bit of slack, it would just drop right in there. All right, so since uh, the cage wire is the exact width of our drum, um, I'm just gonna leave my door in place. And then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stretch the cage wire over it and get everything all stapled in place. Then I'll come back and, uh, and trim the excess. When you staple the cage wire to the peat moss spreader door, make sure that you don't staple to the peat moss spreader assembly or uh, your door will be stuck in place when you go to remove it. Check it out. Voila. I don't know why I always say voila, but it's just stuck in there. So there's our door. Just a piece of screen on the top. We have our catches. Go ahead and put it in place. Drop it down. Now all we have to do here is uh, drill some holes straight through the side. And we're going to put like a little pin assembly in there that holds it all together. Alright guys, had to... I was going to put a cane bolt, kind of like a little L that pushed through there and then swung it out of the way. I couldn't really find any materials in my garage just to do that real simple. Um, but for most of you guys that are doing DIY projects, I'm sure that you probably have a bucket of bolts laying around. So uh, a nut and a bolt here and uh, I'm going to go ahead and inset the nut 
into my uh, into the door of the peat moss spreader, and then we'll just be able to push the bolt through, twist it a little bit, and it'll hold everything in place. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, and use a drill bit that's slightly bigger, and then my bolt. You want to go ahead and drill through with everything in place. Um, there is, we put that center reference line earlier and that's going to be right in the middle. I faced all that drawing on the inside just so I could always keep my reference lines visible um, for the future. Anyways, so I'm going to get as close as I can to that, shooting in from the back side. on both sides. We'll go ahead and do that over here now. So again, find that center mark on the inside from earlier. And then I'm just going to go ahead and put it through right about there. Make sure your door's all the way down and in place. All right, step one done. All right, next thing that we're going to do, get down here for you guys. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and go to a larger drill bit. It's gonna be roughly the size of the nut, and we're gonna drill some insets on the on the door itself. Um, you're gonna to want to go ahead and measure in how far in you want that inset. What I like to do for this is just kind of we'll put that nut there, put the nut right up on the on the bit. So here's my nut, my bit. And we'll kind of figure out how far we want and then we'll go ahead and wrap that with tape. I made this depth marker because I don't want to drill all the way through the material. I just want to drill far enough to inset that nut. That way the backing or what's left of the material acts as a stopper and keeps the nut from going all the way through when the bolt is tightened into it. All right, the only purpose this tape serves here is just letting me know when I'm going to need to stop drilling. Alright, so that was the biggest drill bit I had in my set, so and it wasn't big enough for the nut. So we had to go back to the good old waller out method of just kind of dancing the drill bit around until the nut is big enough. Um, not preferred, but you know, I wanted to get the video done and get this thing in there, so it worked. Alright, I got that pretty close. Now that I got this pretty close, we're going to go ahead and just use a C-clamp here and push that in place. After pressing the nut in with the C-clamp, I did go back and straighten it so that it was uh, in, the, in there nice and flat so I wouldn't have any cross thread issues later on. need to worry about it being all the way in I just need to make sure that that's nice and flat so that you know my bolt goes in straight and actually grabs the threads properly so I got this stuff here this is one of my favorite things to keep around the house um, it is a CA glue or cyan that I can't say it but CA glue look up them on Amazon and then a 2p10 activator and the glue um, Basically, you put the glue in there, you spray it with the activator. Within about probably 30 seconds, you have uh, a nice strong joint. Now, you know, you keep glue around your house. You know that, like, after the first time you use it, this stupid it, the little nozzle thing doesn't work anymore. So, we're just going to be a little sloppy about it, but I'm going to pour it down in there wood glue or I don't know probably any type of super glue would work just fine for this no oh, sorry so this pouring in here got a good amount of glue onto and around the area I had to fudge that a little bit just because I wasn't paying attention for. I just got a stick for spreading it, getting down in the hole. Spray your activator. Give it a good shake. 
and that glue will be ready to go extremely, extremely fast. Alright guys, check it out. So. Here we are. Here's our spreader, our door. Looks pretty seamless. No places, uh, you know, significant gaps or anything for the bolts to get through. The bolt is in and threaded right into the nut that's uh, inset into the door. All we gotta do is turn this a little bit. Take that one out. Take this one on out over here. Now wear in a little bit better over time. And once they're both out, the door will lift right up and off. And you fill her up. Put your door back on. All right, one hand cameraman, one hand door operator, so doing what we can here. Put your door back in place. Put the camera on the tripod. And go ahead and thread your bolt in. Probably only have to give it a couple turns. I doubt it's gonna go anywhere. There you go. Oh man, I accidentally dropped the dang camera. Autofocus stopped working for a second. It's scary. Anyways, there's our bolt. It's a little long, but just stuff I had laying around the house. Just the goal here is to just keep it cheap and simple. I mean, if you didn't have a bolt to put through here, you could probably cut yourself like a, a little wood dowel just to push in place while you're using it and then pull out. Maybe a little swing door here to stop it. Um, but that's the cool thing about this style door is kind of the options are endless for, as far as how you can hold it in place. You can even put a little swing latch here. So you put a screw through a little flat piece of wood that turned and then blocked it and then swing open and then you pull the door off. Um, I chose to go with the bolt. Seems pretty secure, simple. It's what I had laying around the house and uh, seems to work well. So you can take them off on both sides. So there we go again you saw it's kind of tight I definitely recommend going a quarter inch um, a quarter inch too narrow that way you give yourself a little bit of gap and this whole piece will come in and out a lot more easy so there's our original moons that we marked out to take the shape and just uh you know our support um, framing there Here's the inside of the peat moss spreader. All right, so this is just the this is just the takeaway from cutting the moon out up here. So that's why I said it's important just to go down and uh, make cut it all out in one pass. Um, I did go back and I put little dog ears on the top corners here and here all the way around. Um, just that way it helps guide the door in place when you go to drop it in. I definitely recommend that. It worked well. But uh, there you have it, guys. The peat moss spreader door. Sorry it took me a while to get to this. I just uh, I've been out of town for a couple weeks and uh, Anyways, this has been my first priority to get the dumb video back out for you guys. Thanks Anyways, if you like my content, please like and subscribe